friends. Hope you're doing well. Today we got uh, a Gatorade Zero for our beverage. I feel like uh, ever since I got the COVID, uh, which I'm now cured out of the COVID, uh, it has passed. Uh, I've been like super dehydrated. But it might also be because it's like super dry. Uh, just kind of in general, you know, it's winter, and I can feel like my apartment's super dry, so we got humidifiers running, um, which I do want to make some humidifier white noise videos, so if you're not following the other channel where I make the white noise videos, go follow it, because I'm going to make more white noise videos, a bunch more. I'm also going to cut my hair, I've decided, officially, uh, I like... I like the long hair, it looks nice, but it's always, it's always either in the way or it's up and then it just gets like nasty and knotted and gross. Uh, and I also haven't washed it, so it actually probably looks kind of nasty right now. Um, but yeah, I haven't cut my hair in like four and a half years now, so I think it's time. Um, if you look back, if you go way back in this channel, you could probably see uh, short hair. I was also a lot chunkier. Lost some weight since this channel started. I think this channel started in 2016, maybe. So, wow. That's a long time. That's like six years. Six years of making dumb ASMR videos. Uh, I should have just been making ramble videos the whole time. Because I'm having way more fun making ramble videos than I ever did making just weird sound videos. But I still like making the sound videos. So, I'm going to keep making them. Because there are... On this channel, the best videos every month are still old, no talking videos. So I might have to get back into. Or maybe I'll just start sprinkling in some no talking sounds, sharpies. And just people will like that one. Tap on that too. Tap on anything. Yeah! Tap on the Gatorade. Yeah! Fast tapping. I can't tap as fast with my right hand. I can tap real fast with my left hand because I play guitar. Dexterity. What's up? subject. Uh, the reason I haven't cut my hair in a long time is because my last haircut person was my ex-girlfriend's best friend. Uh, and I just feel weird going back to see her to uh, get my hair cut. Also, I don't feel like she did that great of a job, but she was the person who cut my hair for like, I don't know, five or six years. Bef I think that was even before I met my ex. So it was probably more like 10 years. She probably cut my hair for like 10 years. Uh, but it's been four and a half years since I've gotten my hair cut. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to go to a salon and get it done or if I should go to a barber shop because um, I really don't care what happens to my hair that much as long as it's like not a pain in the ass to maintain. I used to do sort of like a, it was kind of like an Adam Scott in Parks and Recreation sort of look, kind of a little bit, but not really. Uh, I do like this, how it it's long, uh, but just... Maybe I'll just get it trimmed back so it's just like shoulder length as opposed to like way down here length and get it off my face a little more um, and keep it longer but manageable so I can have it down more often. Uh, nah, I think I'm just going to cut it off. Just get rid of it. Um, I'm over it. It's been, it's, I've had, I've had my, my time with the long hair and I'm done. Gotta grow up, gotta be a man, gotta be an adult, gotta cut your hair, son. Something I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> I think part of it is because I see all these other people that have long hair, and I'm like, I don't want to be cool, you know? I don't want to be. It's all it's all these like creative hipster people, and they all have long hair now. And I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like having the same haircut as you because I think you're a douche. Because <laughs> I'm super judgmental. What's up? I 
bought an iPad today. Pretty excited about that. Uh, cause I want to, I bought it for a couple reasons. First of all, is my laptop is like, it's getting up there. Like all my tech is getting up there in age. Uh, so I bought new cameras last year. Uh, and now it's time to buy new computers this year because my main editing rig, with the exception of the monitors, is like seven years old. My laptop is like five years old. My iPad is even older than that. Um, and it doesn't, Apple doesn't support it anymore with updates. So uh, I use it sometimes as a teleprompter on shoots. Um, and also it's, I have like an iPad mini. So this, I got a new 10.2 iPad. It's the cheapest one the cheapest new one you can get um and so i think that'll be a lot better for teleprompting which is cool and then uh i'm gonna try to i like the idea of like notebooks like handwriting so i'm gonna get an apple pencil and then try to find like an app that's like a notebook with like page turning and shit uh but then you can like go in and add pages where you want them because i just like i like that because i don't really like i've you know i haven't really found an online one that I've liked. I've tried Evernote, I've tried Notion, I've tried uh, Google Keep, I've tried Google Docs. I don't, I just don't like them. You know, I, I think I just like, I like having the physical notebook, but I have so many just scattered, dumb, stupid fucking ideas that like, I just, it needs to be one. <laughs> and then if I can, if I can just sketch it, copy it, and then save that, in places i think that might be the best system for me for all my dumb bad ideas because oh, i got a lot of bad ideas let me tell you what <laughs> um and also for like keeping notes uh from like books that i read um so yeah so i got the ipad i bought it from costco because i'm a costco member hit your boy up if you want some hot dogs um yeah that so i got that I need a new computer, but I'm finishing up this, like, big, hairy editing project I've been working on since, like, last year, and it's just, like, they keep coming back with, like, like, they just have, like, these random revisions, and then they go away for a while, then they come back, and they're like, oh, here's some, some more random shit for you to, to deal with, and so it's, like, we shot the footage in, like, April, and I was like, okay, this should be, it's, a, it's like, it's going to be a really long edit, because it was, like, 20 interviews, and they're all, like, a half hour long. And they wanted like 40 videos like i'm just you know they really didn't know what they wanted that's really what happened it's like they had some idea but it was really more like okay so we have these like four sections of services i'm like cool and they're like we want like 10 videos from each service and you're like that's a lot you know especially because it's like a foster charity organization so we can't show the actual kids because they're wards of the state so we had like some actors come in and we like did not get enough b-roll to like make 40 videos so i just like i'm just reusing the same like 10 fucking b-roll clips and i'm just like i hate this so much <laughs> i just want to be done with it i feel like we're really close to being done um and then of course the president fucking who's like the backbone of all the videos quit and so um now i have to go like re-edit that to say former because there's no way we can use the videos otherwise because she's like in all of them and so um yeah i'm just i'm over so over this project and as soon as i can get paid for it and like get that out i can take the money and buy a new, new, new computer because i don't want to have to deal with like relinking stuff on external hard drives because there's so much footage i just don't deal with it and i want to be done with it i want to get paid and i want to be like i this i'm not the vendor for you folks like this project is it's you don't know what you want and i'm not a good enough producer to like wrangle you in and be like here's what we should do so like if they come at me again i'll be like hey uh i'm working with this guy and i'm gonna like bring in an editing friend and even if i make 10 percent of the money like it will be worth it to not have to fucking deal with it again
not often, but like, I'll be on shoots and I'll have like a big cough and it'll be a big phlegmy cough. And I know people look at me like, Ugh. and I'm like, no, I already had COVID. We're good. This was like, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. So there's that and just always, always thirsty, always dehydrated. I know that's also like part of like having diabetes. So it might be, so maybe I'm just like not aware that my sugars are also high lately because I've been stress eating a little bit and kind of vegging I'm sort of like sort of getting better sort of not so I keep I, the teeter daughter is going just it's just slamming back and forth for me and I need to kind of even it out and just kind of even keel it but my workouts are getting a lot better I'm getting stronger so I know that's the that's the first step for me is getting the workout in and then the diet kind of starts to fall in line as I like realize that like I'm just gaining the weight back you know, I'm losing the weight, then just gaining it back. <clears throat> so, yeah, because I really want to get my blood sugar back under control. And then start knocking it down. I really want to lose weight this year. And I really want to just, like, go at the YouTube game super hard this year. Uh, the content game. And then the other reason why I bought the iPad is... I've always been attracted to, like, visualizing ideas. Uh, there's a lot of, like, Twitter accounts that do it that just, like, take quotes and visualize it. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. Like, because a lot of it's, like, really minimalist. And so I don't, I can't really draw very well. Um, but I think as, as minimalist as some of these things are, I'm like, okay, I could probably have enough bad ideas and I read enough books and generate enough of these quotes that I could probably make a go of this and, you know, you get better by practicing. How do you get the cardio? Practice. Um, so I'm going to buy an iPad, get an Apple Pencil, and just kind of spend spend a little bit every day trying to make something. Because the big thing I want is I want some decor for my garage gym. And the problem is all of the garage gym decor that you see is all like, it's really tacky. It's got no taste. Uh, it's the quality of the art is dog shit like nft quality art or it's just like bootlicker shit and when i say bootlicker shit i mean like yeah i don't understand this whole fucking obsession with like don't tread like they have like a don't tread on me flag and then a fucking blue lives matter flag and you're like those two ideas are they're your opposite you don't see how that's completely opposite fucking ideologies uh, so that's really frustrating to be in, like, home gym groups and reddits and just see the pictures, and you're just like, I don't think you'd understand what either of those flags mean. Uh, you're just, you know, and you see stuff that's like, as long as you could defend your family, that's all that matters. And you're like, bro, you are single. Like, you're a single, divorced. Like, and you don't have custody of your kids. Like, what family are you defending? Like, your fucking truck. What, like, so I don't know, those people just, uh, like, I'm over it, I, you know, fuck those people, fuck them, uh, yeah, that's as political as I want to get on the channel, fuck those people, fuck the people, you know what, I don't, I don't like getting involved in politics, um, it's, you go just right back to like, ooh, that's privileged, like, you could say that because you're a white man, and it's like, yeah, I can say that. Uh, I still vote, but the options for voting, this, the people, the politicians, the leaders don't fucking give a fuck. None of them do. The Democrats are fucking, you know, they're insider trading super hard, and the Republicans are just too stupid to do it. So it's just like, okay, this is just, it's it's douchebag or dirt sandwich. Like, you take your pick. The South Park nailed it, and they had it perfect. I think what I think would fix is there needs to be more than two parties and the libertarian party is not that's just being republican with extra steps so fuck those people um you know there's in other countries they have like five six parties that's you need that spectrum i feel like and then there's that gradient there's those shades and it's like it's not ma major party minor party it's like okay now you really do fucking have to work together assholes if you want your shit to fucking pass and that's the other problem is like none of them seem to give a fuck if their stuff passes or not like 
it, it, what other job can you get that pays you like two hundred thousand dollars a year where you only have to show up like what like a hundred days a year if that and then the rest of the time you're just fucking doing whatever you want with no oversight and then when you actually do go to work like you you actively sabotage your colleagues and the rest of the time you go on tv to talk shit about them politics is fucked up it's it's all fucked um hey sorry for that just getting in the rants Poof. it's making everybody mad go ahead type your comments like yeah fuck <laughs> fuck politicians so that's where i'm at um other stuff stock trading uh let's see so i bought some options in PLTR, which is a meme stock, and that has definitely just shit the bed lately. I think I'm down like two thousand dollars on that play. Uh, so I'm thinking about just eating, taking the loss, and hitting the eject button. And uh, I still have a bunch of GameStop, uh, which that is also kind of shit the bed. It was trading at like one fifty to two hundred. Right now it's trading at like one twenty five. I still believe in that one, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to hit the eject button on that. I think that there's, I mean, there's all that talk with the short squeeze stuff. And I don't know how much I believe in that. Um, I think it's, I think it's real, but whether or not it will manifest into a short squeeze and crazy prices that you could maybe not retire off of, but I could buy a house with the money. Uh, that'd be cool. So I'm, I'm holding on. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, I also legitimately think the company has, some really big opportunities in the coming years so i'm long on it either way um but for now you know it's not it's not doing so great some of the stocks aren't doing great but yeah it is what it is uh so i think i'm gonna hit the eject button on the pltr take that loss and just go from for new opportunities uh because right now i'm just like trying to sell options that are like longer term like 30 to 45 day to expiration um and then uh it, you know i'm i'm selling them i think it's trading right now like 1650 and i'm selling them for what i bought it for which is like 23 dollars and so the, the premium that i'm getting paid per contract is like five ten bucks you know it's like nothing uh compared to the i don't know six thousand dollars worth of stock it is you know like the return on that like the monthly return, I, I would be better off taking that six thousand dollars and just putting it into an index fund that paid dividends every month, uh, which I do have. Yeah, that's my retirement portfolio. It's more dividend. It's very safe. Um, and then I have like an aggressive portfolio where I like, yeah, yeah meme stocks and option trading. <laughs> but my retirement portfolio is all like, it's index funds. Um, and blue chip dividend stocks, and then a lot of. Um, REITs, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, are uh, real estate investment trusts, which pay huge dividends, uh, but they're not as secure. So that makes up, the, the REITs make up like 10% of my portfolio, and then the index funds, the blue chips, make up the other like 90%. So, uh, and then I just have it all set, so the dividends just reinvest back in the security that it came from. Uh, so the idea is, over time, the shares will grow in value, and then also a lot more shares. And then the goal is to have a retirement portfolio that's big enough, that pays dividends on a regular enough basis that I can just withdraw the dividends and live off of that and not have to really worry about anything else. It's like you call it a pension fund if you want, because I'm a creative. And aside from like YouTube royalties from old videos, you know, once I do the work, that's usually it, you know, I don't have a pension, I don't have a 401k, I'd have to fund that all myself, uh, so, that's why a big part of my YouTube goal is just the number of videos, making a lot of videos, uh, because that's more opportunities to have a video that does pretty well for years, um, because on my White Noise channel, it's really hit or miss, like, I'll make one video, and like my top video has like half a million plays and so that one's made thousands of dollars it's made more than this this channel completely with just the one video and then i've made you know 50 other videos that don't make more than five cents they get like 20 views 
and so you just never know if it's going to be a big hit or not. And there's so many factors that go into it that you have such little control over that really at the end of the day, you can just, you just do the work, you make some videos, you take some shots, and you try to make them as good as you can. Um, and that's, that's all we can really do. That's the YouTube game. So, and that's also why I want to try to get the, another channel monetized uh, and get that going because, you know, having multiple sources of income, multiple chances, I can make more videos, I can make, you know, it'd be great to get to the point. My goal, the big, the pipe dream goal is to have like five YouTube channels and to make like one or two videos per channel per week. And just, that's my job, just making like 10, 15 videos. So having this channel where I just talk to the camera, having a white noise channel uh, where I just make like no talking ASMR and white noise videos, then having a movie review channel where I just watch movies and, and talk about what I think about them. You know, if you had a couple channels and then maybe one or two that were like real high effort, high production value, you know, once you kind of get the ball rolling and, and you make enough money that you can make a living that you move on making higher production and you just get a little bit higher each time i think that'd be a really cool um life to just not have clients and just to make fun stuff for cool people to watch you know that sounds like a pretty good living to me so that's my pipe dream that's what i'm going after uh 2022 is going to be the year i really kind of go after it with a hatchet Having COVID to start the year did not help that plan, but the COVID's clear. I'm, you know, I've been talking for 22 minutes, so uh, I think we're good. And uh, I think you can look forward to a lot more rambly videos here. Hopefully, I'll be able to clean this shit all up or figure out a way to make it look not so shitty. Um, yeah, but other than that, I hope you're doing well. And if not, well, I hope that turns around for you real soon. So, have a good one. I'll see you next time.